Join From Beer to the Bible every week as Irvin Lee and co-host Sarah Oliveira McDonald warn others of the consequences of drug and alcohol addiction by being the voice of faith-based recovery. Every week, Irvin and Sarah help people get access to the treatment and counseling they so desperately need. They explore the depths of addiction and give practical life examples of how to recover and develop a new rhythm of living. The show is gritty, authentic, and simply raw while being rooted in the love, faith, and hope of God. Welcome to From Beer to the Bible. It's Irvin Lee, your host of From Beer to the Bible. And as I start today's show, I want to share with you guys a burden the Lord put on my heart and something, honestly, I've struggled with. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is better than sacrifice. I saw my guest speaking at a going away event for a pastor and he had this light about him and the Lord put on my heart, you should have him on the show. And I'm saying, Lord, I don't, I don't know if he suffered from addiction. I, I just, I just didn't know. So, so many times the Lord burdens us and he sends us, he asks us to be obedient and we we want to push back against that. And I certainly wanted to push back against it. But the Lord kept needling me and burdening me to ask him to be on the show. And I knew I could get to him through his wife, who also has a great heart of service and loves the Lord. So I want to introduce them and I want them to begin by telling their story and help me welcome Kathy and Carrie. Thank you. Yeah. How are you guys today? Doing great. First of all, thank you for taking the step of faith to be obedient to the Lord. We all love to sacrifice, but the hard part of life is walking in obedience to the Lord. So tell us a little bit about uh, your testimony and how you guys came to be a couple. All right. Well, I better get my shot in early because <laughs> everybody's going to know which one to believe. <laughs> Uh, my version of the story is boy meets girl and girl starts following boy around begging him to marry her. <laughs> uh, that wouldn't be the truth, but yeah. uh, it, it would make for a good story. So okay. uh, I uh, I had um, grew up out in West Texas and had recently moved to uh, Dallas Fort Worth. This is a long time ago, back in the in the eighties, <clears throat> and um, found the Lord when I was you know a young child, but never understood really the difference between the Lordship, you know, really following him. And so I was a pretty messed up uh, kid. And, and uh, in college, I was, uh, uh, you know, probably two and a half years, either stoned or drunk mm -hmm. uh, or both. Uh, we, we just figured uh, the person that we were buying our drugs from was just a pharmacist with a limited inventory, right? And so uh, it was a little cheaper to use both. <laughs> and uh, definitely turned addictive and and I had um, found some freedom from that uh, when I moved here and wised up a little bit. Um, took me uh, seven years to get the college to give me a four-year degree and uh, so I was a little older and um, uh, maybe started to mature a little bit and and uh, and decided that I would uh, I would go to a to a church uh, Park City Baptist Church way back then um, I had a cousin going there and mm -hmm. that's that's where I met met Kathy and started off great. Uh, and then I was, I think we talked about this. I was a little bit of a Velcro man. Yeah. Uh, a little, little bit, clingy. little clingy, little clingy. <laughs> yeah. Real, real attractive to women. <laughs> clingy. And, uh, and so, uh, that's, that's kind of my side of the story. So. All right. Let now ground us in the reality of the relationship. Oh, you are the, not the real side. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. You know, I was thinking about this and I thought, you know, it's, it's ironic to me because I know I don't look this old, but it was 40 years ago, like this week that I moved to Dallas. Oh wow! And, um, I came out here after I got out of college and I, um, I, uh, had lived with my aunt and uncle. I had an aunt and uncle that lived here, lived with him for about 30 days till I get my feet on the ground. And so I, uh, but I hadn't met anybody and I didn't have any friends. I had, a, I'd gotten a job, but just nobody that I connected with. So 
Anyway, so I went out one night with my aunt and uncle and my six-year-old cousin and waited for a table at Chuck E. Cheese for 45 minutes. And I thought to myself, then I got to get some friends. Yeah, like, <laughs> so. yeah. That was on cue. Like, yes. look, I need to pivot and find some real friends. I've got to find some friends. Yeah. So I went to, I grew up in the church. Okay. And uh, so I went to Park Cities Baptist and... um and it was funny. I met a girl there one that Sunday morning. And so we agreed the next Sunday morning to meet and come to uh, Sunday school together. And so anyway, with a turn of events, and then we went to Sunday school. And then that night we went out with some other friends that she had. And it was a completely different situation from being at church. Well, let's yeah. just put it that way. Okay. And so um, I got back that night. Uh, to my aunt and uncle's house, and I really, I sat in the car, and I just remember this was a turning point for me because I was, I gave my life to Christ when I was nine, and had followed the Lord and and um, all of that, and so, but that night I just sat there and I said, Lord, um, I am in this big city mm-hmm. by myself. I mean, I have my aunt and uncle, but I've got to learn how to maneuver this by myself, yeah. and um, I can't do this on my own. And I still, that was a pivotal point for me. And so the next day I had a choice and um, there was a Bible study that night and I had a choice and all day I went back and forth. I was like, I am not going to somebody's house. I don't know. Them. I'm not walking into a room full of people. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I'm not doing that. Mm-hmm. And then I go, yes, you are. Yeah. And then I go back and forth. But that night I did, I stepped out in the faith and um, met some wonderful people. And really, really, that was the pivot point for me. And a, a little over a year later, he wandered in okay. to church, and uh, we met and started dating. And then he was very clingy. At the time, I was very independent, and I was like, "He's got to get <laughs> So we, uh, I, um, broke. We broke broke up. Yeah. And I did not do it gracefully Thank at you. all. <laughs> I was very mean. And I still so, have scars. Yes. But the interesting part of that is that there's all kinds of interesting parts that we could belabor on. But um, he uh, spent the next, it was about six months later when we, he could, gave me a phone call uh-huh. and he took the risk to take the phone call yeah. and, and call me. And, um, and then we started talking and, and honestly, that was in February and uh, we were engaged in July and the next February we were married. So didn't take long for me to realize that he was a good guy, but, um, he had changed in that six months and I let him talk about what, you know, that. Carrie, did you know you needed to change to win her heart? I did. Uh, but, um, true to the prompting Holy Spirit put on you earlier that you said to uh, introduce the show about obedience. Um, I thought, very simply, I lived in an apartment with a roommate, and uh, it was a pretty, uh, pretty rough apartment. Uh, it was more important to me to own a nice car than, than where I lived, and uh, and so I realized I'm, uh, my trajectory is is changing here, and I need to orient it back to Father. Mm-hmm. And so, literally, I took one of our dining room chairs, um, I cleared out a space in my closet. Uh, uh, two bedroom apartment, and I put a chair in that closet, and I said, "Okay, Father, you and me, let's build a better carry." Yeah, because I feel something special about this girl, uh, and so if it's going to happen, you're going to make it happen, and so let's build a better carry. Let's draw into you. Let's build intimacy with you, because then I can't lose either. What I'm feeling is authentic about her, or well, either way, we're going to have a better carry. What I hear from both of you guys in your testimony is surrender to the Heavenly Father. And talk about the importance of surrender when we have these circumstances and these desires and these burdens that God puts on our heart. Yeah, boy, what a fantastic point. Um, I think that's what makes um, your walk with Father um so um, contradictory in times because I did battle addiction uh, with drugs and alcohol, but a fairly short amount of time, certainly nothing that, that I would even, you know, mention much if, if I wasn't, uh, you're talking a, a little bit about it. 
But I think what's sneakier is an addiction to success. Yeah. And you, you, you got to take ownership of your life. Um, but it's more of a stewardship that you're supposed to take of your life. And it's so easy to get those confused. I can get it straight on Monday and have it confused by Monday night yeah. because this in, and it's in Romans, I believe it's Romans four in the message. Um, I think it's the first verse that we're, they've been bragging on Abraham, yeah. uh, but it's not an Abraham story. It says Abraham entered into what God was doing. And so to me, that's the juxtaposition. That's the, the conflict is to take ownership. You know, Holy Spirit's not going to cast this aura on you and just remove addiction from you mm -hmm. or remove your addiction to success. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be you taking ownership. But then on the other hand, it's, it's, it's a weird brand of ownership. And so I think surrender is the key uh, that it's, it's, it's kind of rough news. Yeah. But. You mean it's not all about me? Yeah, no. It's, dang it. I thought it was supposed to be about me. Oh, man. And uh, it's his story. Yeah. So, and in our part. Okay. Kathy, what would you add to that? Well, I do. Um, uh, surrender is a tough thing. And I, I when you walk in um, comparison and perfection, which are two things that I fought, um, then you have to realize, you know, I always, I, I went through a season, I guess, I don't know, personality or what it, my, the way I was made. And, and sometimes I go, Lord, you made me this oh, way, you know, that's, that's, yeah, that's, you're that's, the one that made me. So what is yeah. up with this? Yeah. Oh my goodness. But I, I realized at a point that if something was not right in our lives or something had gone wrong, I thought I had messed up. And it was my fault and that God was mad at me. Mm. And so I had to realize, or I, I just, and I still fight that. That's yeah. something that you overcome, I think, every day. Yeah. Um, and comparing and looking back and, well, if we had just made this decision, this would be different. Or if we had made this decision, this would be different. Yeah. And um, so I, I, I realized one day, or probably not one day, but I realized that it is our story. And there's this wonderful book called Heinz Feed on Hind on High Places. I think that's the name of it. Okay. There's a story in that book that she's riding along with this other person and then they something happens to them okay. and she keeps going, but and then she looks back and she's like, Well, well, what about them? What about them? And the Lord says, It's that's their story. That's not your story. And so I, I, um, as you get closer to the Lord, it, it, it's just an overwhelming gratefulness that I have mm -hmm. that he's guiding and he's leading and it's not up to me mm -hmm. and I don't have to be perfect mm -hmm. and it does work out for his good. So I, I just, I, uh, it's an encouragement to me to just go to him and we, I have, um, I, I love the relationship with the Lord. It's very intimate. It's very close. And it's like no other. Yeah. When I hear other people talk about the relationship with the Lord, it's like, I'm not like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, that's okay. And I talk to him in different ways. And so um, I think surrender is just, okay, Lord, this is your story, right? This is God's story. And and I'm reading this another series of books I love to read right now. And it's like how their... Um, ancestors it goes back to finding out where they came from okay. and i and the other day i thought you know where i am now is not just choices i've made but other people have made yeah. and they haven't always been good good choices mm -hmm. but it has led uh, but i'm grateful for those choices yeah. because it led me to me being here mm -hmm. and so um you know just walking with the lord and in in the light of his ways and in and 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 just knowing that it's okay, and he will talk to you. He will lead you, and he will guide you into all things. Not not in your timing at all. Yeah. I had a friend really that gave me a prophetic word the other day. It's like in the Bible. Um, don't you? Then it look the Lord's always late. Like they run out of wine. It yeah. was done. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah. You know, last year was up just in yeah. the nick of time. Lazarus right? was dead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he didn't smell good. I yeah. mean, it was. So true. That's that's a great word, and 
I kept asking myself, Lord, why did you introduce me to this wonderful, blessed couple, right? And what it was, and this is what, this is what the burden on my heart was, is that God was showing me that he restores and he holds together loving relationships between us, but also between the father, like you talked about. And it gave me encouragement for my wife and I. I have been sober for a while now, but you know, I was a pretty bad dude there for a long time. And so many times we want complete healing as soon as we get better, right? I'm better now. You need to be better. Well, truth is, I inflicted, unfortunately, there was a lot of collateral damage and pain that was caused to my wife. So I have to allow God in, to work that out, to heal that, to restore. And sometimes when that isn't happening as quickly as I would like, I can get a bit disappointed. Like, you should be over that now. Mm -hmm. Well, through you guys, I realized that, hey, even through good, bad, the ups and downs, that God is faithful and God restores mm -hmm. and resurrects relationships when we trust in his time. And then I would say this, I went back and I said, let me look at the marriage vows. And in the marriage vows, you guys should go do that. <clears throat> it says for, as they are, when you get married, they say for better or worse. And I said, oh, okay. Cause in the euphoria of getting married, I don't know, at least I didn't. I didn't really sit and read at the time, and I wasn't with the Lord like I am now, what I was signing up for and agreeing in covenant before the Lord God. So I went back and started reading that, and I said, wow, this is what I signed up for to reorient myself mm -hmm. and my heart. So talk about the importance of supporting one another when one falls down and one is still upright. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I uh, I love um, I love simple things. Um, I've got a degree that's um, that that began in geophysics, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm still slowly recovering uh, from that. Uh, personality not required. You know, you just you just learn science, and um, um, I love simple arguments that explain a ton of things. And so, to your point, I, I love the way. Pastor Robert, as I understand it, Robert Morris, our, our founding senior pastor at Gateway, I love the way he received this download from Father um, that most of religion was saved and serving. Mm -hmm. And he wanted a church that would be saved, healed, set free, discipled, equipped, empowered, and serving. And I can use that one simple but powerful download to explain almost every failure in life and every one of my failures because there is a way things work. Yeah. There is a kingdom realm with a kingdom set of operating principles and there's the way it works. And I think we get overly confused, no yeah. disrespect to to books on purpose, but I think we get dis um, I think we get easily confused and fathers simpler than we realize. We have one purpose, all of us, intimacy with Father. Mm -hmm. And then what we're come, what we're confused about for my life, I'm confused about my current mission. It's not, well, well guess what? The reason you're confused about your mission is because your intimacy has dropped mm -hmm. from the person who's downloading your current mission. Yeah. And you were obviously on mission that day we met across the room, didn't even realize we, we met. And then finally, your mission is always going to involve another son or another daughter. The world's confused about that right now, but he's not. Yeah, and uh, and so son to daughter first before the covenant of marriage, mm -hmm. and so she's assigned to me, and I'm assigned to her. Um, it's not one's better than the other. I might win most of the arm wrestling. <laughs> that doesn't mean I'm stronger. Yeah, it just means my arm is. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we're supposed to be in covenant, working together to help each other, realizing that our story is for God's glory, and so kind of a complicated set of points, but my, my real point is when, when I could back off from religion and praise God for the little Baptist church that brought me to Jesus. Yeah. But I didn't know this was a father. Yeah. 
and we haven't parented. Kathy said raising me has been significantly childlike enough. Um, so I think we have a little bit of a disadvantage um, because we're not fathers and mothers, but I didn't understand that there was a process that saved um, was the entry point, yeah. but I was messed up, man, and I needed to be healed and set free, and she was part of that healing and part of that setting free. Then you get into ministry, yeah, like she's on, on staff at Gateway, and and you're in full-time ministry, I'm in the financial realm, you're going to get the snot kicked out of you. And so you're being discipled, equipped, empowered, and serving, and you get the snot kicked out of you, and you need to go back and get healed again. Yeah, That's normal. Mm -hmm. That's not odd. And so there is a way things work. In the kingdom realm, axe heads can float. I'm a scientist. I got a problem with that. Yeah. Okay. That's because there's a way things work that aren't in our natural order. And and what's resounding in my spirit this morning is <clears throat> the victory is the surrender. The victory is not victory. I defeated something. I built this. We took my company to ten million. Now we've taken it to twenty million. I won that sales encounter. I won that contract. I beat that opponent. Those are not victories per se in the kingdom realm. The victory in the kingdom realm is the surrender. Yeah. And, and that's how you cure every addiction, right? Because an addiction is simply, in a slowly recovering scientist, an addiction is simply you placing something between you and your father. That's that's very well good. That's, that's good. That's good. Kathy, what would you add to that? You know, um, when you think about the marriage vows, now when I go to weddings and yeah. young couples are getting married, and yeah. I just kind of chuckle to myself. Yeah. Like, well, look at there, son. No idea <laughs> what you're signing up for. You might run if you knew. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's it's an amazing journey. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> and we are so we are a lot alike, but we are very different people. Yeah. And uh, I always told him he's so he he is so smart. Uh -huh. It's intimidating, honestly. But I think that um, I, I I was thinking about this this morning. I thought, you know, in our situation, if somebody said, "Who's the steady one?" Yeah, it's like, well, it depends. Mm -hmm. You know, depends on the circumstance and the season and the season. That's exactly Good. right. And uh, we have two cats, mm -hmm. and so this morning one of them had a hold of something. And I was like, what in the world do you have? And I kind of picked him up by the nape of the neck. Well, it was a lizard. Yeah. He had found. And of course, I was not the steady one yeah. at that point in time. It's like, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> but but in our situation, and I, I did want to share this because I, after um, my parents went to be with the Lord um, within about 14 months of each other, and they'd lived very full lives and, and were ready to go see yeah. Jesus, which was wonderful. Yeah. But after that, I went through about a two-year experience of anxiousness and, and panic attacks and didn't know where they came from. And when you when you come from a background like I do, which has been a very a wonderful background filled yeah. with love and cherished family and friends, then you can't in your own self figure out what, what I've done to mess myself up, right? Yeah. And, and, and if it hadn't been for him in the two years of just staying steady and walking with me through that, I mean, there was some, there was some tough, tough days. Yeah. And, um, and so in, in that, you know, we're just kind of, I say we're kind of glued at the hip. It's just like, um, you, you, um, it's just a commitment that you can't explain. Yeah. Right. Uh, and when you walk through life together, as we have, and we've had so many great experiences, I mean, 37 and a half years, you got some, congratulations, you got some that. experience yeah, going sure. on. Yeah. And so, um, so I, I just, it is a, it's full on when you say for better, for worse and sickness and health That's right. for richer and for poor. Cause he said that about, you know, coming to go to 10 million and 20 million and how you going to act when he goes back down to yeah, 10 million then. or back down to no, no. Oh yeah. oh yeah, and we've been through all of that. Yeah, so. and, and that's <laughs> what's so that's what's so encouraging 
for me because I now we've been through all of that. And I was thinking about prosperity and the impact of prosperity. And so I go back and I was looking at my life and the burden and the thing the Lord put on my heart is that he said, you've always made decisions based on money. And I was like, no, no way. So, of course, I sit there. I debate with the Lord. I lose that debate. He was right, right? I could have been walking in my purpose and my calling a long time ago. And he was always directing me one way. And I was always saying, no, 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 I want success. I want money and I want things. And at the height of having all the stuff the world tells you, I was so unhappy, right? I was so unhappy. But as soon as I I started to, I'm going to say, recover from all of that, I realized it's not the things. It's the relationship with God that really started to satisfy my soul. And within that was the surrender to say, I don't know how all this works. Meaning, you call me to the ministry. How's that going to be supported? How's it going to I had a whole bunch of how. And the simple answer God gave me was, I'll be with you. And that has to be enough sometimes. That just has to be enough. Because once you surrender, then you are able to step out on faith, knowing that God goes before you, in and through you, and all around you, making supernatural connections, talking to you. And in my obedience to reach out to you guys, encourage our listeners as we kind of come to a close today around when the Lord shows up and says, go to have the faith to go and surrender and be obedient. Well, I think you are. No, go ahead. Well, as you talked, I was thinking about in 2011, Mm -hmm. uh, we had been through a couple of business failures and different things. And uh, we'd been um, self-employed for about 23 years. And, and, um, and there were some things that just, okay, bluntly, somebody had a good job. (laughs) And so, and so I, um, that year, it took a year to walk through that yeah. and figure it, not figure it out, just let the Lord lead. And, um, and, and I decided, I said, all right, Lord, this is, you're going to lead me. You're going to guide me, but I'm going to do something every day. Yeah. I'll do something every day mm-hmm. to, to make, to go forward and then have the faith and trust that you will you will guide it and pull it all together. Mm -hmm. And so I look back, that was about from February to August, October. And, um, and through so many little bitty things that didn't seem like anything at the time added up to, uh, me being hired at Gateway Church. And, but it was a nine month, you know, you have to, it it was a nine month deal of, What am I going to do? What am I, where am I going to go? What are we going to do? How is this going to work out? And, uh, but I, but just taking a step of faith every day to do something. Yeah. Add it up to, it's been a, it's been over 12 years now. And I, 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 the people that I work with are just my, uh, they're just wonderful. And they love, you know, and I, and I love them and the, and the things that we get to do every day for the kingdom is just amazing. So I'm very grateful. Carry add on. Again, I, I just think there's a way things work. Um, and unfortunately, we tend to complicate that and, yeah. and we don't understand that it's a kingdom realm. I think Tony Evans is, is the groundbreaking yeah. work on all of this. He was actually our first date. Um, and uh, I went to get, hear him speak and uh, still a life changing message. We did a little small group and bought his messages and downloaded them because there is a way things work and mm-hmm. the victory is the surrender. We had two multi-million dollar assets, business ownership that we owned 100% of one and, and, uh, around a third of another, we had yeah. those that they were, I'm, I'm going to say they were destroyed. Mm-hmm. Now I'm going to say I was removed from them okay. because I had surrendered my heart, um, Take your time. 
I had surrendered too much of my heart yeah. to the pursuit of prosperity. Mm-hmm. Nothing wrong with prosper- prosperity. It's the heart. Yeah. That's fathers. And so I look back now and see how we were removed from that. For every 100 men that can handle adversity, I think there's one that can handle prosperity. It's all in the Bible. Look at King David. Yeah. All in the Bible. And so the victory is the surrender. That's the way things work. You've got to surrender. <clears throat> I'm in financial services. Mm-hmm. Um, in the By the mid-70s, 90% of the people in this country that had a job got something called a pension. Yeah. And a pension is a guaranteed lifetime income. Yeah. You serve your time, you're paid for life. Now less than 10% get a pension. What's my point? My point is we are charged to be in an intimate relationship with a father who's also a king of kings. We should live like pensioners. We should be about our intimacy with him, download our current mission. It's always going to be about a son or a daughter or reaching a son or a daughter. The Bible is so rich in its literal literacy, if you will, of I pave streets with this stuff that you wear for jewelry, yeah. and my jewelry is sons and daughters. Mm-hmm. And so be about them, surrender to that, and you're a pensioner, and you're going to be provisioned. Yeah, uh, that's good. That's good. Thank you, guys, so much. Thank you. Once again, you. God is proven faithful and yeah. right in His prompting, and I'm so glad because you got to bless so many people to show them what a kingdom of God marriage is like, and that the victory is in the surrender. So yeah. thank you, and God continue to bless you guys, and we'll have you back. And as we close today, I want you guys to know, Kathy said it earlier, and I struggle with this myself. God is not mad nor disappointed in you. God is not mad nor disappointed in you. God is faithful. God is just. And God is true. God is love. And I want you to take away today the power in obedience and the victory that is in your surrender to follow the promptings and the leadings of the Holy Spirit. May God richly bless you, and we'll see you next week. Thank you for tuning in to this week's From Beer to the Bible. Make sure to tune in next week when Irvin and Sarah gift you with even more addiction recovery information. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And remember, we're always there for you.